Jesus. Amen? Amen. Luke this morning, Luke chapter number 2. Luke chapter number 2. Luke chapter number 2. Good to see you this morning. And I'm excited about Christmas. Man, next Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, we'll have one service. And you'll get here. If you'll get here at 11, I'll have you leaving at noon. All right? And uh, I'm just going to play a small part in it. Our choir and our church are going to be singing. And our church is going to do some extra music for us. And uh, appreciate all the effort and the work that goes into that. But I hope that you'll be here 11 o'clock. We'll have just one service next week at 11 o'clock. And uh, there'll be no evening service, no Sunday school hour, but 11 o'clock service next week. And I hope and pray you'll make every effort to be here. How many of you are planning on traveling during the Christmas holiday? Would you raise your hand? You're planning on traveling. And how many of you have guests that are coming in? They are traveling in. And folks that are going to be here, great, wonderful. Well, I thank you so much for being here this morning. And I hope that we'll never truly really forget the reason for the season. And it's often a cliche because it's often used so much, but truly Jesus is the reason for Christmas. And without the Lord Jesus Christ, there'd be no reason to celebrate. There'd be no hope. There'd be no gift to talk about. But the Bible says that that gift that was given to us, that gift of eternal life was offered through God's Son, Jesus. I'm so thankful for it. Amen? Aren't you thankful for Christmas? How many of you have a fond Christmas memory? You have a fond Christmas memory. Would you raise your hand? You have a fond Christmas memory? Man, there are always stories that we could talk about at Christmas time. And, and you know what? You don't usually or you don't normally appreciate those memories until they become memories. You don't appreciate them while they're taking place and you don't really think about them or look at them like, man, I'm going to look back on this one day and laugh or think about it and it's going to be important to me. And you don't really think about that until it becomes a memory. And it's so important that we cherish the moments that we have uh, with our families. It's important that we cherish the moments that we have with our children. I know all of us as parents say uh, we wish that we could slow time down just a little bit. Every parent that's ever raised a child that's ever grown up has always said, man, I wish that I could go back and enjoy a little bit of the, the times where they were younger and smaller and shorter and didn't eat so much and didn't cost so much and, you know, didn't, didn't take so much and all that kind of good stuff. You know what I'm talking about. And so I, I'm, I hope you'll appreciate and cherish those moments with your families over the next uh, few days. And I hope that we'll truly never forget that Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. Let's pray together this morning. Lord, we love you. God, thank you that you care for us. Thank you that you love us. And thank you for your son. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you, Lord, that in spite of our condition and, Lord, despite of our, in, in spite of our uh, circumstances, Lord, you, you looked beyond our fault. You saw our need. And you were willing to make a way so that we could truly enjoy uh, the gift of eternal life. I pray, Lord, you bless the service this morning. Help me. Help my mind. Lord, help the words that are said to honor you. And, Lord, I pray that we would, we would love you more today because of the word of God. May your people fall in love with you more and more each and every moment. And, Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless this place and use it for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter number 2. You're there already this morning. Luke chapter number 2. I want you to look down with me, if you would please, in verse number 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us. They came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God 
for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. There are many times that we have to, as pastors, begin to really seek out the Lord and, and determine, God, what do you want me to speak about? Or God, what is the subject matter this week? Or Lord, what do you want me to deal with? And there are times that we have to really pray and to really ask the Lord, God, give me the message. But there are some times throughout the year where God chooses the message, like Easter and Christmas. And there's no reason that we should try to change what God has already tried to establish. There's no reason that we should try to do away with what God has already said is important. I believe that Christmas is an important time of the year. I believe it's an important time of the year, not just because of what society and our culture has made it, but it is an important time of the year because of the verses that we just read. I preached to you earlier this month on the shepherds and, and talking about the results of Christmas. And, and the Bible says that the shepherds, after they met the Lord Jesus Christ, after they came and saw the babe in a manger, the Bible says in the last verse that we read there in verse number 20, and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God. The result of Christmas in our homes this year should be glorifying and praising God. The result of what takes place over the next few days should cause us as Christians to want to run to the Lord and say thank you for what you've blessed me with. Thank you for what you've given me. Think about the fact that the job that you work that provides the money that you use to purchase the gifts that you give is a blessing from the Lord. The family that you go and enjoy, the people that you sit down and have dinner with, the things that you do with that family, that's a gift from the Lord. All those things that God has given us and the, all the things that God has blessed us with, we need to praise the Lord and glorify the Lord and thank the Lord for all that He's done in our life. When you think about the blessing of Christmas, there's no way we could put into words what Jesus has done for us over the last few months. It's amazing. Christmas is at the end of the year, and at the end of the year, we begin to reflect back on all that has taken place. And for some, this year has brought heartache. For some, this year has brought turmoil. For some, it's brought blessing. It's brought miracles. We've been given gifts that we can't even describe from the Lord. But the result of Christmas in all of our lives should be we should praise and glorify the Lord. But as we look at all of the things that God does for us, I want us to see the effects of Christmas on Christians. The effects of Christmas on Christians. I said just a moment ago, how many of you have a fond memory? And when you think about those memories and you think about those moments in your life, they bring a smile, some bring a tear, some make us laugh, some make us cry. And the truth of the matter is, is all those moments that we think about, we wish we could go back in time and, and step into them for just, just a moment. It would be wonderful. It would be wonderful to be able to do some of the things that we were able to do as children. The excitement of Christmas. I remember as a kid... I don't think there was any more exciting time in the life of in my life as a child than the days that were approaching as we thought about Christmas. I remember thinking, man, I'm going to be extra good this month in November. And of course, by Thanksgiving, that was done. But I remember thinking, man, I'm going to do I'm going to be extra good. I'm going to do extra chores and man, I'm going to make sure all these things are taken care of. And I just remember being excited about Christmas and anticipating what was going to take place. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I mean, I'm, listen, there's nothing wrong. As an adult, I still get excited about Christmas. I mean, I like my wife. She loves to play Christmas music. She loves to play Christmas music in our home. One of her favorite songs is I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas. <laughs> How many of you know that song, I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas? Listen, let me encourage you. If you've never heard it before, go home today and blare it over the speakers in your home. You won't get it out of your head till next Christmas, all right? Oh, man, I thought about playing it for you this morning, but I didn't want to ruin the spirit. Amen? My wife loves to play Christmas music. We love to get into Christmas season. We decorate in our home and, and all kinds of things, and we enjoy the excitement of Christmas. I love, to, I love for my children to see their dad excited about Christmas because one day they're going to be dads, and I want them to be excited for their children. I want them to be able to pass something down. I enjoy this time of the year, even as a child, but as an adult as well. But understand something, that as believers, as Christians, Christmas is much more than decorations. 
It's much more than a tree that we place up in our home. It's much more than lights, and it's much more than time together with family or even a day off. Christmas means so much more to us or should mean so much more to us than oftentimes we allow it to. Take your Bible, if you would, please, and we're going to turn to four different passages this morning. And so I want you to be ready to turn. I want you to take your Bibles, if you would, please, and and just look back one chapter at verse number 37. Luke chapter number 1. Look back with me, if you would, please, in verse number 37. Number one, I want you to see the reminders of Christmas. The reminders of Christmas. Look in verse number 37. The angel Gabriel has appeared to Mary here and has told, told her what's going to take place. And of course, as you can imagine, Mary's in shock, as you would be. And the Bible says, no, listen, Mary, don't worry, it is okay. Look in verse number 35. And the angel answered and said unto, her, said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born in thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month of her who, is, who was called barren. Look in verse number 37. For with God nothing shall be impossible. You say, what does Christmas remind us of? It reminds us that we serve a miracle-working God. It reminds us that we serve a miracle-working God. I've said to you several times already this month that as we look at the culture and in society today, that the suicide rate and the depression rate and the discouragement rate all skyrocket during the month of December because many people begin to believe that the source of true joy is what they possess or the things that they possess or the place that they fall in society. But friend, understand something that the believer understands and knows. If you know Jesus, Jesus Christ as Savior, you know the ability of God to take that which is dead and make it alive. You know the ability of the Lord to give that purpose to something which had no purpose at all. I'm thinking this morning, I'm grateful this morning for the fact that I serve a God that right in the middle of the Christmas story reminded us that with God, nothing shall be impossible. You say, why was it important that Jesus came to this earth? Because friend, there would come a time in your life and in my life when the the man's ability and man's possibilities would come to an end. But with God, there is no end to the possibilities. There is no end to what God can accomplish. There is no end to what God can do. And as we sit down and we unwrap a Christmas gift over the next few days, help us to understand and God help us to remember that it is because of the gift of God that there are no, poss- no, no limits to the possibilities of what God can do. He says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Think about that Christmas story. I'm so thankful for the virgin birth. It is, it is one of the foundation, it is, it is the beginning foundation of salvation. Had Jesus been conceived any other way than by the Holy Ghost, salvation would not be possible through Him. But because He was conceived of the Holy Ghost, salvation is made available to all men. There is a God who is a miracle-working God. With God, nothing shall be impossible. This coming year, you're going to face struggles. None of us, none of us last year at this time thought that we would have to go through some of the things that we went through this year. None of us that have dealt with some of the things we've had to deal with in recent days thought this time last year we would have to deal with them. But God knows. And I'm so thankful that it doesn't have to be just Christmas time that I remember and I recognize that I serve a God of the impossible. When you've reached the end of thinking, your thinking, of your idea, there's a God who can begin to work. That family member, that loved one, that co-worker, that child, that son, that parent, God can change their life because He's a God of the impossible. May we be reminded of that at Christmas. Number two, take your Bible, if you would, please, and go to the book of Isaiah. Go to the book of Isaiah. The first promise of the Savior didn't take place in the New Testament. It didn't even take place in the book of Isaiah. It took place in the book of Genesis. 
where the very God of heaven promised that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of Satan. Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 15. But as we look in the book of Isaiah, I'm in Proverbs, not Isaiah. <laughs> I was wondering why it didn't look familiar. If we look, when we look in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 9, turn there with me if you would please. I want us to see, secondly, not only do we see the reminder of Christmas, but I want us to see the rejoicing of Christmas. The Bible says in verse number 6, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Wonderful, unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. When you read that verse, Isaiah, as, he, as it was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, it is read that unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. In other words, Jesus is pictured in that verse as a gift that was given. Now, there are a lot of good gifts that I've received growing up. One of the greatest gifts I've ever received, I didn't even receive at Christmas time. I received June 27, 1998, when I got married. My wife is my best friend. She's my partner in the ministry. And I love her dearly. She loves me dearly. And I'm thankful for all that God's done for us. I didn't know that I could, I didn't know that I could receive anything. I mean, I, I, I didn't think I was the sharpest tack in the box, but I didn't think I was the dullest one either, you know what I'm saying? Amen. Thank you, Brother Andy. I appreciate that. There you go, brother. Amen. Let's get Brother Andy a cut on his tithe next year for that. Amen. But I'm thankful for the gift. I'm thankful for my children. You know, I used to think, you know, when you think about children, you know, it's, it's, a, it's you know, when children are born, it's a little overrated. You know, people make this big deal. It's, you know, how could it be that precious? And then I remember all of my children being born. I remember crying at all of them. Just that emotion that overwhelms you. And I was th- I'm thankful for the gift of my children. I'm thankful for my family. But when you begin to compare the things that we've received in this life as a Christian, there's no greater gift that we have to rejoice over than the gift of Jesus. Amen. You say, what came when we got Jesus? Look what he says, wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In other words, packaged in that gift of Jesus was everything you would ever need in life. Think about the fact that Jesus was born and wrapped in that manger was the answer to everything you would ever face. Wonderful. When we're discouraged, we can always be reminded of a wonderful Jesus. When we've been betrayed, when we've been hurt, we can always be thankful for a wonderful Savior. Counselor, how many times have we needed an answer and we didn't have one? And we simply had to stop and wait on Jesus and we understood that God's timing was always perfect. The mighty God the everlasting Father. How many times have we searched for contentment and satisfaction only to find it in Jesus, the Prince of Peace? Packaged in that gift was everything we would ever need in life. There's a reason to rejoice. As a matter of fact, if you look in Luke chapter number 2 and you read the verses that we just read, the Bible says, And the angel said unto him, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Stop for just a moment. Good tidings of great joy. I remember my dad preaching a message on this topic and he he mentioned in that message the fact that we should rejoice. We should rejoice because fear had ended. What did he say there? The angel said to them what? Fear not. We don't have to be afraid with Jesus. 
We don't have to fear. As a matter of fact, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. He says that we're to be anxious for nothing. Why? Because Jesus is present. We're to rejoice. We're to rejoice in the gift of Christmas. We're to be reminded of the gift of Christmas. Secondly, I want you to understand the reaches of Christmas. The Bible says in that verse that we just read, he said, For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Look at the next line, please. Which shall be to who? Which shall be to all people. Can I say something to you? Christmas was not just intended for an elect group. Christmas was not just intended for a certain denomination. Christmas was not intended for a certain location in our country. It was not even intended for a certain continent. The Bible says that Jesus came to die for the sins of the world. He said, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Which shall be to all people. As a matter of fact, if you look at who the angel is speaking to there, he's speaking to shepherds. At this time, it's about a month away from Passover, and the Bible teaches us that the high priest would bring their sheep outside the city and keep them there. And the shepherds would have the job of not enjoying all the things that were going on at Passover and not enjoying the worship. The shepherds would have the job, the meager job, the simple job, the often looked down upon job of watching dirty, filthy, smelly sheep. And the angel of the Lord didn't show up in the gate of the city. The angel of the Lord did not show up at the home of the governor. The angel of the Lord did not show up where the gathering was taking place. The angel of the Lord appeared unto the men who were out doing something that society would look at as an outsider to the shepherds and said, I have some good news to tell you. I'm so thankful that the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gift of God and the gift of Christmas does not stop with a certain class of people. It does not stop at a certain country. It does not stop with a certain race. It does not stop with a certain set of circumstances. Friend, the gift of Jesus Christ reaches far beyond anywhere we could go. From every man, from Adam who has lived to every man who will ever live has an opportunity to know the joy of Christmas because Jesus came and made it available to all men the Bible says which shall be to all people the reaches of Christmas but what makes Christmas so great is not only was it a reach that could exceed far beyond our imagination it was a reach that could go into the inner part of our heart where you and I are Jesus not only died for the sins of the world and I'm thankful for that but the greatest gift that I ever received at Christmas was the day that I realized Jesus died for me. <laughs> How far did Jesus reach? He reached right into your heart. Helped you to see the need that you had for that gift. Good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. Not only do we see the reaches of Christmas, and not only do we find reminders of Christmas, and not only should we rejoice in Christmas, but I want you to look with me at one more verse in Matthew chapter number 1. Matthew chapter number 1. Matthew chapter number 1. Verse number 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. I want you to see, lastly, the reward of Christmas. The reward that we enjoy is eternal life. We don't like to think about it, but the truth of the matter is that, that the life that we live will one day come to an end. I know of two people right now, the doctors have told them, any moment, any moment, can you imagine having to deal with the struggle of losing a loved one at Christmas time? 
And every Christmas that rolled around, that thought popped in your mind. Life that we live is a gift from the Lord. And at any moment, it could be over. It could be gone. My question to you is this. Have you received the gift that Jesus offered at Christmas? You see, the greatest gift, that reward that you can enjoy, that blessing that you can have, is not what we may receive this week. Because what we receive this week underneath the Christmas tree, in all honesty, will probably be forgotten in just a few days. But the fact that Jesus was born in a manger for the purpose of saving people from their sin is a question that every one of us must deal with, with eternity in mind. I'm not talking about a, a fad in your life. I'm not talking about a spiritual moving where you feel like you want to do better. Where you feel like, you know what, I need to change some things. We don't have the ability to change anything. We don't have the ability to change anything. It's God that makes the change. If any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. In other words, without Christ, we can try all we want to. We're going to falter and fail. But if you'll allow Christ to take up residence in your heart, and you'll understand that the reason Jesus came was so that he could save people from their sins. If you'll allow Christ to come and reside in your heart, God can begin to change the things that need to be changed. There's a reward for Christmas, and that reward is knowing Jesus. I hope this morning that you know him. I hope this week when we sit down together, some of you are going to get in a car and you're going to drive off tomorrow. You're going to go visit family, and I say, and I'm encouraged by it, and I'm thankful for it that you get to do it. But I hope in all of our busyness that as Christians, we don't stop to, we, we, we don't get so busy that we don't stop and remind ourselves of the greatest gift of Christmas. That was Jesus. Packaged and placed in a manger. And he would provide everything necessary for life. He said, I've come that you might have life. There is no life apart from Jesus. You say, Brother Brian, do we have a dynamic message? There's no more dynamic message than Jesus. I can't convince you. I can't do it. I can't do the message of Christmas justice except to tell you there was a babe born in a manger whose name was Jesus. And the reason he was born in that manger so that he could live 33 and a half years and go to a cross Die at Calvary for my sin. Be buried and rise again. So that this world could know there was a gift that was given to redeem us from our sin. I hope you know Jesus this morning. And I hope if you know Jesus that you've allowed him to impact and change your life. Lord, let's pray together. Lord, we love you. Lord, thank you for all you do for us. Thank you for blessing us and taking care of us. Thank you for loving us.